So good morning. Welcome to God's Anointed Hand. Um, Ten o'clock service. I'm Pastor Lyons. I'm standing in for um, Pastor Timbo. Um, just glad to be here. Just glad for another opportunity to share the Lord. And definitely, definitely, definitely thanking him for those who are hearing me and for myself for having another opportunity to praise him in another day that he has created and we were fortunate enough to be put in. So, Pastor Stevens, could you lead us in prayer just thanking God for this opportunity that he continues to give us out of his mercy yes, that we have not deserved? <clears throat>
about a God today that there is no other way that you can make it without him. There is no other way to eternal glory without the Lord. You will not make it on your own. You cannot get there on your own. You don't have blood from your body that could get you there on your own. So, so I want you to understand when, when you get time, when you take time and make time, Give the one that is sacrificed the most his glory, his honor, and his praise when you can, because he has given you an opportunity to do so. So this morning, <clears throat> I thought I'd talk about how we saints, we disciples are to be dressed, and our dress is different from the rest of the world. Um, and you know, even yourself, when I'm dressing, I... I like to dress in some form of order. I don't put my undies on after I put my pants on. I don't put my shoes on before my socks. And I don't even put my cologne on before I wash. And I know that we love to run to the scriptures about putting on the armor of God and making sure that we have everything on. But there's something 
that has to be under that armor before you can put that armor on. My scripture today comes from Ephesians chapter 6 verses 13 through 17 and if you want to look up the scripture and I can wait a moment say amen when you find it but it comes from Ephesians chapter 6 verses 13 through 17 and it reads as follows therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. Then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Yes, now, now, I want you to know this is my topic verses, uh -huh. but the topic verse is what goes under that? You putting on all of this, but what goes underneath it? So, so when I think of this verse and I think about being a knight for God and what must a knight wear under the armor to be comfortable so it fits right, so it feels right, so it, it doesn't move and shake and cause harm because I can't get it to be where it needs to be because that armor doesn't always sit right on me or fit right on me. I might have to grow into that armor or wear something underneath the armor that makes it sit right on me. Uh -huh. My scripture for today comes from the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. One verse. Therefore is God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Yeah. See, ha have any of you read about medieval times? You know, the story of King Arthur and the Knights at the Round Table. Watch some of these shows like Night Falls or a medieval-based movie where knights are fighting on horses or jumping down in combat, and their armor fits them right so they can move properly with it. But who wants to put just plain cold metal on fleshly body? See, the knights wore armor to protect themselves. They, they went into battle with more courage, and they had to make sure that their armor fit them properly. And I, I look at all of these and I see that they all had to be a chosen group also. Amen. And even when they volunteered, they still had to make it through the tests. They had to learn all of the things from swords to proper etiquette when addressing the king, the queen, or any other title. They were trained up, but their big thing truly was to become a knight. And in order to get there, they did not start off wearing the armor. They had to be clothed in order for them to learn how to wear the armor and how to carry the armor and how to move in the armor. And, and, and if I was to tell you this, a gambleson, it's a padded defensive jacket worn his armor separately or combined with the plate of armor, meaning it's underneath. It's, a, it's another form of armor. It's another level of protection that's worn underneath this armor. And it also doubled as a winter coat, uh-oh, for wearers, for protection. So with those few words being said, let's look at the clothes that we have to put on 
prior to us always claiming to put on this armor because if you ain't got the right clothes underneath, the armor ain't going to fit or, should I say, work for you. See, we don't, we don't want to put the armor on before we get dressed. Just like I said, you don't want to put your pants on and then put your undies on. You want to be dressed so when your pants slide up, they slide up properly. They don't hurt you. They don't feel rough. So, it might be cold, but first and foremost, we must know that we were chosen for this task. And, and some did it willingly. Some had to get knocked off a beast. And some had to see Jesus at work. But most importantly, we all have to do it by faith. See, as the speaker addresses us in this verse, it states that we are chosen and holy and dearly loved. And, and understand, if you took a minute to say we are chosen, somebody selected us. They selected us to be a part of this kingdom. Yes. And, and, and it, was, it, it was a holy selection too. It wasn't just a regular, oh, I'll take one and two and nine and ten. It was a holy selection. And this was all based out of a dearly loving, a love. Our king loves us. Or there would have been no cross, no salvation, no grace and mercy, and no eternal life. Our king set the example that we would die for his people and he had the full armor on, but let's talk about the clothing that he wore at all times. See, uh -huh. knights don't walk around with the armor on at all times, but they always dressed. See, Jesus was clothed in compassion. Jesus yeah. was compassionate. And all that he did from performing miracles to teaching to even when he was supposedly lost and he told his earthly parents that he was doing his father's work. Man. An example of his compassion can be found in Matthew 9, 35 and 36. And it reads, Jesus went through all the towns, the villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So, so this tells you that our compassion should be on us and it should travel with us everywhere we go. I want you to know, I, I, I had my, my feelings stomped on this week. I had my emotions on high, but it does not allow me to still not show compassion to the one who was doing it to me. I, I, I sat here and cried the other night just because of what was happening to me, but it still does not deter my compassion for the other people that may have done this to me. So, so we don't get a pass. Because somebody else is acting up. Yeah. See, we should be compassionate to all people. And, and I want you to understand, all people are believers and unbelievers. Yes, we should never see ourselves above anyone. Because we ain't got no pride. We are servants. We are compassionate servants. And we should feel in our spirit that we must be in the mindset of Christ Jesus as stated in Philippians 2 and 5. In short, it really just says, what would Jesus do? If you want the scripture, it truly says in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. See, compassion should be something that we slip on like a shirt. We don't walk outside without a shirt on. We don't go to work without a shirt on. Your compassion shouldn't go without being on you. 
We know that we need a shirt on to be accepted in public and compassion should be part of our daily attire. We were given and are still given so much compassion that the true question should be, why do we look like we don't have on our proper spiritual clothing? An angry disciple ain't got no compassion. A bitter disciple, where's your compassion? A disciple that is not smiling, just knowing that God is God. Yes, he is. Where, where is your compassion? See, when you realize that Jesus was compassionate towards all of us, then how come we are not passing that compassion on? God gave it to us. If you turn to 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 3 and 4, it says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh-oh, here comes the title, The Father of Compassion and the God of all comfort. Compassion is comforting, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with comfort we ourselves receive from God. So my compassion is not based on how you treat me. It's how I treat you. The Lord that I serve is the God of compassion. The power that I have from him is compassion. And his compassion isn't based on my actions. It's based on his love. Wow. See, this compassion thing is one of those difficult things to do for a lot of people because we want to know how this benefits me. What I get out of this situation. And, and, this, and, and why does it seem like I always have to do this? You know, when you're compassionate, sometimes you're going to be crying. Sometimes you're going to hurt. Sometimes you're going to say, why me? The real and only reason that you have to do this is because you are trying to be more Christ-like. And if that is the case, then what would Christ do? Did, did you ever ask yourself what was his reward or why he left glory for us? The only reason is so that he could share, and I stress to you, share the glory of God the Father in all that he has for you and I. In short, Jesus did it out of love and obedience to the Father, and God accepted that sacrifice out of love. Could you imagine someone that you have not been treating right saying, the only reason that I am compassionate towards you is because no matter what, I love you, and I want to give you all that my Father has to offer you? If that sounds like Jesus, then you know my Savior. Because that's what he did. And, and, and don't think they were trying to hurt his feelings, weren't trying to hurt his feelings. Don't think that they didn't say words that were not acceptable. Don't think that they didn't have actions that went against him. Because if they didn't, he wouldn't have been on that cross. So even when they attacking you, even when it may hurt you, you don't get a pass. How much compassion can the Lord have for a lost people that he told that I want to be your God? God wants a relationship with us and Jesus left from on high and looked down low to come save us. Can, can you put on your kindness? Can you put on some kindness? And, and kindness is also a hard thing because once again, you give of yourself and, and may not have it returned to you. You know, being kind is something that sometimes just tears your heart apart because the world sees kindness as a weakness. I, I hear people say, why are you so nice to me? What is the problem with y'all when I'm nice to you except that you've accepted the way of the world which says treat me poorly? It's hard because it rips at your inner being. 
you 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 work hard to be kind and people still find flaws in kindness. But the sad thing is they rejoice in the bad ways. They they highlight the bad ways. Watch your news sometime, you'll see how many bad things they can speak about, but two minutes, maybe. Yeah. They'll say something about a kind thing. Uh -huh. uh, uh, you, you, you know, you, you, you've probably been in a relationship in the past or present where a woman or a man is saying, why are you so nice to me? Yeah. Well, the question is not, why are you so nice to me? The question should be is, why don't you expect me to be? Uh -huh. You've accepted uh -huh. some ways that Kindness is not common. And kindness should be yeah. common. Yeah. Kindness is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. It is a piece of the fruit of the Spirit. And kindness in general usually means it goes to someone else. Uh -huh. You don't do kindness because it makes you kindness. You do kindness to somebody else. And it may not come back. It ain't a boomerang all the time. And, and Ephesians 4.32 tells you who to be kind to and why should you be kind. God Almighty has been kind to us and if it was not for Jesus, where would we be? Whenever you are kind, you benefit yourself and the Lord will repay your kindness so Stop looking for the people to repay it. They may not know how to repay it. Some people don't expect kindness. Some people don't know kindness. And some people have been beat so badly by this world that seeing kindness makes them nervous. They don't know how to receive it. It would be nice if they, they knew how to, but as I said, we do it because of Philippians 2 and 5. When, whenever we have an opportunity, we should do kindness and, and be glad that we have been given the test to be Christ-like. I, I know some of y'all may not like taking tests, but when Christ puts a test out there, when the Lord has a test out there, it's an easy pass because he's already given you the weapons and the answers. Can you just write the answer down? I bet you if you just write the answer down, it'll work for you. The only thing that is wrong with being kind is when you stop it. What if the Lord stopped being kind to us? How would you feel? Let the Lord tell you that he can't help you and, and be kind to you. and Then you figure out why would you do less? If you are afraid to have God's kindness taken from you. If you look at Galatians 6 and 10, it says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. He, he didn't say not believers. He said especially to those that believe. So we, we do especially to those that believe. But don't be fooled. It didn't say not unbelievers. Because it says to all people. Especially to those who believe. And humility in short is. To know that you are a servant of the Father. And don't place yourself higher than anyone else. See, that person that you are looking down on may be that person that is lifting you up one day. That person that is a crackhead may be the person to talk your child through the addiction. That, that, that woman that's a prostitute, that man that's a prostitute may talk your child into going to college instead of coming this hard way that I came in life. This person may be on a different road and know Christ better than you do. 
but you just don't see them going on the same path that you're going. We are all the children of God, and some claim their parent, and some don't. But it doesn't stop God from being God. You believing and not believing does not stop God from being God. Humility is what guides your actions for servitude. It's stated in Philippians 2, 3 through 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of the others. Uh-oh. That sounds like a servant. But true humility leads to understanding and fear that will be rewarded. And, and you can look in Proverbs 22 and 4, but it just states to you, humility is the fear of the Lord. Uh-oh. And, and its wages are riches and honor and life. Uh-oh. Fear the Lord. Wages are riches, honor, and life. And, and let me give you two thoughts of humility that we should recognize. And, and somebody somebody want to mute their phone? But let me let me give you two thoughts of humility that we should recognize, and I want you to hear this. There is nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. And that speaks to your own humility, whereas you speak on improving yourself because you see your own faults. And the second one, which is something of old, which I heard when I was younger. On the highest throne in the world, we still sit only on our own bottom. See, see, I love this statement because it says no matter where you are at in the world, no matter what your status is, have the humility to know that you are in the same place that I am sitting, on my butt and struggling along life's way. See, gentleness is another piece of the fruit of the spirit and patience should, should go together because gentleness is a quality of being kind and you need to have a patience when you are showing gentleness. Could you imagine a doctor seeing you that you have a broken leg and he pushes it and says that this is a broken leg? Or could you imagine a, a baby learning to walk and you don't put your arms out and cheer them on? Come on, come on. See, Paul understood this and Paul gets gentleness and patience together in Ephesians 4 and 2. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. They go together. It goes together. It, it, it's always on a constant date. Gentleness and patience has to be done out of love. And it even says bearing with one another in love. Man, this stuff under this armor. <laughs> you might want to think about it before you say, I'm putting on the full armor of God. Because you need these things underneath it for the armor to fit. See, see, love will make you gentle and patient. Because the Bible describes love as first being patient. See, these are love qualities. Do you, do you have some love qualities in your spirit? Because if you do, then we all can put on the clothes and see how they wear with the armor. See, the, the thing about these clothes are that they are worn in the flesh. Uh-oh. But, but they are seen in the spirit. See, you can't put on the armor if you can't put on the clothes. Those clothes have to be under the armor. See, these clothes put you in the mindset of the Ten Commandments where they make you recognize sin with the Ten Commandments and, and makes your flesh work so that the spirit gets stronger. The clothes of the flesh will help your spiritual armor, but the spirit 
has to be the one driving. This, this spiritual armor that we talk about, this love, this patience, this kindness, it comes from the inside and it becomes a barrier on your flesh. Like a shirt, like a pair of pants, like a sock. See, when you look at these things, when you put the compassion on, the breastplate of righteousness slides right on and it fits you. You needed that compassion on so that the breastplate had something to cover that flesh with. The belt of truth had to have some kindness with it because God made a sacrifice for us and it was a kindness of love which leads us to the ability to wear the belt of truth because we know of the kindness and mercy that he gave us so we needed the kindness to give the belt something to buckle up to. The kindness will swell you up and, and give yourself a belt of truth, something to hold on to, and get fat with your kindness and move to suspenders if you have to. But the truth is that the kindness and love that has been given to you was given to everyone. And it leads to salvation. See, take up your shield of faith with the patience that you have shown others. First, we are to recognize just how patient the Lord has been with us. And even though we have failed, he has given us time to increase our faith through his long suffering and patience for the ones that he loves. So patience will let your faith grow. And remember to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what is promised. See, patience is a virtue that is inseparable from faith. Are you still waiting on Jesus and doesn't it say don't be anxious in any of your doings? Then it's really saying be patient. That's who we have to be. Waiting on Jesus is a faith thing and patience is a situation. And as James states in James 1, 2 through 4, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, Whenever you face trials of many kinds, it didn't say one trial or certain trials, it says many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. See, your gentleness shown to one another is what helps you shield also because the evil one is throwing some things at you. But the gentleness will help extinguish some of those arrows or count it as the armband to hold that shield in place. Watch when you are gentle with the person that gives you a hard time. They stumble because they don't know what to do. They wonder what happened to you because of your calm in the barrage of flaming arrows. And, and when they see that the flaming arrows aren't touching you, and they are getting weaker than they know that a child of God is clothed with the proper attire in order for them to put on the armor of God. I didn't forget about the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit because as your clothing gets stronger, then you will be rewarded with the helmet of salvation because you have taken the time to fully clothe yourself in Jesus. You have taken on Jesus' ways and you understand the gospel not just by the word but by your actions. The sword of the spirit will be getting stronger because it has been growing all the time as you have clothed yourself in the ways of the Lord and your spirit has grown and become stronger because your clothes have become bigger. And you have grown into these clothes which have given you the opportunity to put the true clothing of God under the armor so that you may march into this world dressed from flesh to spirit in the Lord's ways. You remember what we said on Ephesians 6 and 11 and 12, but part of the armor, part of this armor has to be what is worn under that armor and how the armor feels when it properly fits. Don't get caught going commando because the armor is going to be cold and hurt. 
It won't fit right because you know, just like I know, that when you don't have the proper attire on under your clothes, they feel funny and you are not comfortable. We wear undergarments to make our clothes fit better. And if you know, like I know, some of us need extra. So you can even get extra clothing from the Lord because we all need it. Don't get caught not dressed properly because someone is waiting to catch you and seize every opportunity to take your joy away. In closing, let God dress you and you will see that God is a better tailor. His clothes last longer. They feel better on you. And when you get done wearing his clothes, here you will get the rest of your clothes, which is a new suit and glory. You can wear Metzlers down here if you want to. You can wear Gators and Jimmy Choo's included down here if you want to. But there will be no better suit than eternal life. And dressed in the glory of God. So make sure when you put your armor on down here that you are thoroughly suited. Amen. Got a storm going on down there? Thing we couldn't hear you a minute ago. Okay. There you go. Anybody else on? Yes, I am here. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always enjoy that. And it was a very good message because 
if we truly let God dress us, we won't have the worry that we have. Amen. How we look and how it fits. Amen. So that was a great message. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I tell you, uh, let me add, you know, this, with this time change, mm -hmm. I think I, I was going to lie at, at, at 9.30 this morning because I didn't change the clock in my bedroom. I, didn't, I wasn't worried about it. But I said, when I got, I saw the clock time, I said, okay. I went on dial up. And it said, okay, you know, only somebody don't lie. Anybody else? Deke, you want to pray us out? Did we lose him? Brother Payne. Brother Payne, yeah, you I'm still here. there? You want to pray us out, sir? Pastor Stevens coming on in about five, ten minutes, and then right. I will be back on at two o'clock Mississippi time, three p.m. Um, Atlanta time, and then we have Pastor Jimmy McClaslin on at six p.m. Mississippi time. So there's a whole day of getting some preaching in and some praising in and getting the message in and out to the world. So please join us. Amen. 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 Amen.